us, brother. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rick. Good morning, everybody. I don't know who gave that woohoo over there, but that's all right. Well, good morning. It's good to be with you uh, this morning, Faith Promise uh, Sunday. Uh, the, the gospel has not changed for 2,000 years. Our Lord and Savior has not changed. He has come to seek and save that which is lost. Amen? Well, I don't have too much time this morning, so we've got to get our giddy up on. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Did you ever have that feeling uh, inside, like, what's next? You know, what's, what's going to be next uh, for me? Like, uh, w- if you can remember graduating high school or moving on from uh, college or vocational training, you know, you have those antsy feelings of uh, what's next. Or even moving on in life, like uh, uh, if uh, the passing of a loved one, people moving on. Uh, is there life after divorce, what is next? Even uh, retirement age, you know, moving from working to not working, you have those feelings of what's next? What, what is, what's behind this corner? What's next? Here uh, with the disciples, the disciples, uh, at this point, uh, Jesus has ascended to heaven. Uh, he sent uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, they have been empowered uh, to be witnesses. And now it's like, okay, the baton is passed uh, to the disciples. And now What's next? What does this actually look like? How does this uh, work out uh, today uh, for, uh, for the disciples? The, the word that is in my spirit is continue. That's the word that's in my spirit, continue. The disciples continued in Acts uh, chapter 2. They continued. New Life Christian Assembly, uh, we need to continue, Amen. We need to continue in the mission of God to seek and save that which is lost. Last year was a wonderful year. The year before that was a wonderful year. God is doing wonderful things in New Life Christian Assembly. Now is not the time to build a monument and say, hey, look how wonderful things are and and to sit and to remember. No, now is the time to continue. Now's the time to continue, not to uh, memorialize, but to continue and to look what is next. As we look in the scripture, I I want you to uh, see these words with me in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 uh, through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, uh, to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. Many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had every Everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued. There's the word. They continued. Verse 42, it says, they devoted. They continued. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. So here it is. The disciples have received the baton and they are continuing. But I want to take a step back and I want to talk and brag about my Jesus this morning. Is it okay that we talk about Jesus and his church? Amen. We sang about him, but I want to talk about him because what are we doing? If if we are just meeting on Sunday mornings and singing and doing and, and doing all these things, what is it that we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to continue to do the things that Jesus did while he was on earth. These are the things that we are to continue. So how can we be on mission if we don't know what the mission is? What is it that Jesus said? What is it that Jesus did? How did he live his life? And, and we could stay here for years and just talk about what Jesus did, what Jesus said, and testify of all the goodness in our life, of all the things that Jesus had done. But we don't have that much time. But I want to bring a few things uh, to your attention uh, this morning. First of all, Jesus went. Jesus first 
went. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he went. You know that Jesus was a missionary. He left one place, go to another, and he represented the Father. He was an absolute missionary. He left all of glory. He loved the world. He looked at this world, and he loved the world. And because he loved the world, you and I can love the world as well. He was the first missionary. He went. He saw something in us. He saw something of value. He created us in his image. And then when we fell and did our own thing, he came and he redeemed us. Amen? He saw us. Jesus first went. I love also that the Bible says that Jesus grew. He grew. The Bible says in Luke 52 that Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, favor with God, favor with man. Jesus grew. There's something uh, about the Son of God coming to earth, uh, being born in a manger, and growing. He, he, God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And he grew. He grew in wisdom. He grew in favor with God and favor with the people. He grew in favor with people. For 30 years, Jesus grew with people. He grew. He had the favor of God. He walked in a neighborhood. He grew up in a neighborhood. He traveled and had a job and went. He he grew. What does that mean? That means that you and I can grow. I think we have those words around here. You can't even look around here without saying grow. God is asking for you to grow. Jesus grew. He's asking for you to grow. He came, not only did he love the world, but he loved people. He loved people as well. I love that picture of Jesus. There's just something so endearing about that. Emmanuel, God with us. I love the fact that Jesus came and he loved. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And I love the fact that he came and he loved us. And he showed us and he spoke to us. He spoke hope into the people's lives. He walked the same roads everybody else walked. And he loved and he spoke and he gathered and he gave us. And he was with us, Emmanuel, God with us. God loved people. Church, God loved people. And he did something about it and he moved and did something. Jesus walked the roads that you and I have walked down and he loved people people. I love how he was present, and I love how Jesus spoke the truth. Where, whatever happened to the truth these days? What, what has happened to the truth? Jesus came, and he spoke the truth to us. He said this. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody gets to the Father unless they come through me. He says, I am the door. He says, if you've seen God, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He came and he loved us enough to give us the truth. That's what love will do. Love gives you the truth. The church needs to love people enough to give the truth and to show the way to God. Jesus came and he spoke uh, the truth. Jesus came in a self sacrificial type of way. Let's move on to the next slide. Jesus uh, forgave people. There we go. He forgave people. I love this about our Lord. He, he didn't come with the hammer. He says, I didn't come to condemn, but I came to seek and save that which is lost. He came and he forgave us of our sins. He met us right where we are. And if we were to pass this baton around and pass this microphone around and find out where was it that Jesus found you, Well, we're not going to do that this morning. He looked past your guilt, looked past your shame. He looked past my guilt and my shame, and he took it upon himself, and he says, come, follow me. Come, follow me. Lord, but Lord, you don't know. He says, no, you come. You follow me. Lord, you don't know. This picture of, uh, of this woman, this is the picture of uh, the woman who was, who was caught in adultery, basically trapped in adultery. And they came and they brought her to Jesus' feet. And they said, Lord, the law says we've got to stone her. What do you say? And Jesus, he just kneels down and he writes in the sand. And he says, you, without sin, you be the first one to cast a stone at, at her. 
And the Bible says one by one, they dropped their stones and they left. Dropped their stones and they left. Why? Because we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And Jesus stands here today not to condemn anybody, but he stands with open arms and welcome all of us and says, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. How many times does he forgive you? Seventy times seven. We serve a forgiving God. We serve a loving God. We serve a God. He says, you've seen me. You've seen the Father. We serve a God who forgives we serve a God who self-sacrifices. I don't know if we're, uh, we'll move on to the next slide. We serve a God who's self who's present in the community. Jesus walked, he, Jesus walked this earth. He lived in a community. He actually worked. Jesus could have been one of those day labored, a day for higher people. He worked with stones. He worked in carpentry. He traveled uh, and, he, and he was a hired person. He worked with his father. He was present in the community. He was so present in the community. He spoke in the temple. Uh, he spoke to his disciples. He spoke uh, publicly. He spoke privately. He was present And he spoke of a future. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to prepare. The carpenter from Nazareth was going to prepare a place for us in heaven. And then before he left, he said, not only am I going, I'm sending you the comforter. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit that he will be with you and he will convict you and convince you and he will empower you to continue to do the very things that I have been doing. He says, you're going to be a witness. And after that, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You're going to be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And this is what God is asking for us to do. He's asking for us to be a witness. Where? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. I think that covers Haverhill. Hallelujah. Uh, here we go. We're, we're right here in in uh, in Haverhill, in Massachusetts, we're close to New Hampshire. How did we get here? I have no idea, but we're here. And the call of God on our life is to be a witness. The call of God on our life is to be empowered by God. The call of God on our life is to know Jesus, to love people, to forgive people, to point people to Christ, and to tell the truth about God. The same very words that Jesus said. He says. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father unless they come through me. This is what missions is all about. We are not on our own mission. We don't use our own words. We don't use our own power. We don't use our own propaganda. We don't use any of those things. We stand on the blood of Christ. We stand in the word of God. We point to God the Father. We're empowered by the Spirit. We're not here just to hug one another and love one another. We are on mission today to seek and save that which is lost, the very same thing that Jesus did. This is why we're here. And if all we're going to do is get together and eat and have fun, food, and fellowship, it has nothing to do with God unless his purposes are in it. We can't have church without Jesus. There is no church without Jesus. He's the head of the church. So what is the church to do? We're to continue to do the very same things that Jesus did. That means the church goes. That means the church is to grow. That means the church is to be present in the community and walk the streets. Come on now. Come on. We don't need to be protected from anybody or anything. We need to go. We need to be the face of Jesus, the hands of Christ, the feet of Christ, and go. The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of him that brings good news. How beautiful. We've got to grow. We've got to love people. This is what it says. Look, they devoted themselves, and they continued. What did they do? They ate with people 
with a purpose. They broke bread. They had communion. They prayed together. They sacrificed together. They gave. They gave and they prayed. They went and they did. They got together and they went from house to house and they and they uh, they furthered the kingdom of God. They were witnesses to God Himself. I want to highlight two people uh, this morning uh, regarding mission. Two people that we really uh, don't talk about a whole lot in Holy Scripture. But I want to highlight two people. Uh, Regarding the PowerPoint, let's just go to Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila, I want you to check these people out. These, These are wonderful, wonderful people in the Scriptures. They received the gospel and they did something about it. We really don't talk about them a whole lot. But in Acts 18, verse 1 to 3, listen to what the Bible says about Priscilla and Aquila. And my Acts teacher is here today, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Pat Gallagher, he's here today. But yeah, so if I say anything wrong, you know, I took Acts 20 some years ago. So it's not his fault. It's my fault. All right. So anyways, so Acts chapter 18, it says it says after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. You catching that? Because Claudius had ordered the Jews to leave Rome. So Aquila, a Jew, is kicked out of Rome. Paul went to see them. And because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. The Apostle Paul was hired by Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila, I will call them missionary mavericks. They're, they're, uh, what, what type of people get kicked out of countries? That's what I want to know. What kind of people get kicked out? Priscilla and Aquila got kicked out of Rome. Claudius kicked them out. Dangerous people get kicked out of countries? They're dangerous enough to get kicked out, but yet they're hospitable enough to open up their doors for the Apostle of Paul to walk in. We see hospitality. We see Priscilla and Aquila. Just just that name alone, Priscilla, right? If you're going to have a daughter and name her Priscilla, you better have a lot of money. You know, you got to have a lot of money. That's going to be one expensive wedding. That's all I got to (laughs) say. Priscilla is, it's like an upper class name. It's, it's, a, it's a little foo-foo, right? It's a little foo-foo. You probably have a little foo-foo, a little teacup poodle and all, and all that stuff. These guys now, Priscilla and Aquila, they're bivocational. I want, you to, I want you to catch this. They're bivocational. They're working and filling the mission of God in their life. They're working, filling the mission of God. They open their doors. They're sharing their resources of what they have uh, with the Apostle Paul. They're expelled from Rome. They're radical enough to get expelled, hospitable enough to open up their, uh, their doors for the Apostle Paul. Look at this again in Acts chapter 18, verses 18 to 21. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sailed to Syria, accompanied with Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had, uh, he had his hair cut off in uh, Conchentria because of a vow he had taken. There arrived in Ephesus where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. Look, Paul's leaving Priscilla and Aquila in Ephesus. He himself went on to the synagogue and reasons with the Jews uh, while they asked him to spend more time uh, with them. He declined. But as he left, he says, I'll come back if it's God's will. And then he went and uh, sailed to Ephesus. In verse 24, it says this. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus, where the apostle Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He had learned, uh, he was a learned man in thorough knowledge of the scriptures. This is the uh, apostle Apollos. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him into their home and explained to him, the way of God more adequately. When Apollos, uh, when Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him, and he wrote uh, to the disciples, uh, and then uh, he went on. So we see that uh, Priscilla and Aquila, they're left by the Apostle Paul in Ephesus. And what do they do again? They open up their home. 
They spend their resources, and another apostle comes walking in. And this apostle is teaching in Ephesus, and he's only teaching a certain amount. He's teaching about the Holy Spirit, and they know a little more about this than the apostle. So what do they do? They open up their home to the apostle. They, he walks in the door, and they teach the apostle, the Bible says, the more excellent way. Priscilla and Aquila, witnesses for God, using their money, their resources. Oh, by the way, they're kicked out of Rome. Now uh, they're, in, they're in Ephesus, which is about 700 miles away from Rome. Seven hundred. They didn't take a plane. They didn't take a train. They took the Shoelace Express and walked. What did they do? They became mobile. They spent money. They invested in people, and they opened up their home, and they forwarded the gospel of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Romans 16, 3 and 4, Paul, the apostle, writes this. He says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Listen, they risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. What do they do? They open up their home. They risk their lives for the mission of God. They spent money. They had a job. And they paid. No title with Priscilla and Aquila. They just were about the father's business. 1 Corinthians 16, 19. 1 Corinthians 16, 19, the Bible says, the church uh, in the province of Asia sends you greetings. Here we go again. Are you ready? Priscilla, uh, Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord. And so does, you ready? The church that meets in their home, they're at it again. They're at it again. There's a church meeting in their home. What are they doing? They open up their home. People came in. The kingdom of God grew. This is Missions Sunday. This is Missions Sunday. What does it look like? The gospel has come to us. What does it look like? It looks like we've got to open up our home. It looks like we should continue to work. It looks like we should continue to spend. It looks like we should continue to support those who go and do it full time. It looks a little like something like that. And the Apostle Paul at the end of his life is in a prison cell in Rome. And he writes this out of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 19. He says this, you ready? Greet Priscilla and Aquila in the household of Onesiphorus. Greet them. What did they do? They gave the apostle a place to stay. They gave the apostle a place to work. And they touched many people's lives. Listen, folks, you may not have an opportunity to come and stand behind a sacred pulpit and preach the gospel. But that does not mean you don't have anything to do. It means your job is just a little different. It means your mission may just be a little different. And as we look at the book of Acts, they continued. They devoted themselves and they continued. They received the power of the Holy Spirit and they went out and they became witnesses everywhere they went. The first martyr for Christ was not a pulpiteer. It was a deacon. Are you listening to me? It was a deacon who sold all and sold out for the kingdom of God and was preaching. He knew what he was talking about. He preached the hand of God was on him. He saw Jesus as he preached and they murdered him because he spoke the truth in love and they killed him. The first martyr we see over and over again in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit falling, people coming to Jesus. The church is growing. The church moved to Rome. It moved to Corinth. It moved to Ephesus. And it grew and it grew and it grew. Why? Because people became witnesses of Jesus Christ. Jesus loved them. Jesus forgave them. Jesus wrapped their arms around them. Jesus gave them a hope. Jesus gave them a future. Jesus forgave them. 
changed their life. He made all things new and empowered people to go and tell somebody else how good our God is. This morning, I'm telling you, it is good news, good news, good news. It is still good news that Jesus loves, saves, heals, and delivers, and he has a place for you. It's good news this morning. So the modern church today, what are we, what are we to do? What, what's next? We had a good year last year. What are we supposed to do now? Continue. We continue. We continue. The baton is passed to us. And let me tell you, can I tell you one of the, one of the things the enemy of your soul would really love for, for it to happen in your life, in my life, and in our church. Are you ready? Ready? You want to hear what the enemy wants you to do? The enemy wants you to hate people. Why? Because he hates everybody. He hates absolutely everybody. We see that Priscilla and Aquila got kicked out of Rome. They were displaced people, and they had to go someplace else. People have been kicked out of countries uh, since the beginning of time. Are you listening to me? Now we have people getting kicked out of Assyria, and we have people uh, who are going into other countries, Germany, Europe, the United States, people being kicked out and going. And you know what? The enemy would love for you to hate. But I just think God is on the move. I think God is on the move. I think not only are we supposed to go, we're supposed to receive and to represent Jesus. We're to love, we're to forgive, we're to reach out, and we're to touch each and every person with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We had a missionary just this week in our chapel service. Uh, he stood up and he said, listen, what's going on in Assyria and in Europe? Uh, people, people are leaving. They are fleeing their country, and they're getting out, and they are coming, and he's, and he's planting churches in Germany, uh, Brian Weaver. And he said this. He goes, he's a pastor in Germany, and a few Sundays ago, 25 Muslims walked in the church interested to find out about what the Bible says about Jesus. They want to be received. They want to be loved. They want to be presented with the gospel. And I'm telling you this, if the enemy would have his way, he would have you hate people. That's not the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We could, Killing is wrong. Doing things are wrong. Uh, shooting people, wrong. These things are wrong. We know that. But this is what God does. He forgives. He looks past. He presents a hope. And he, he wraps his arms around us. The enemy will love for you to hate a race. That's divisiveness. That's not the gospel. It's not the gospel. And when I heard uh, uh, Pastor Brian talk about we received 25 new Muslims into church today. They want to check it out. This, this morning, this, uh, yesterday, there, there's six hours. So yesterday, they said, Today we're looking at 40 Muslims coming into church to check out a Christian church, a church that speaks and tells the truth, a church that loves, a church that goes, a church that gives, and a church that forgives. Let me tell you, church, I want to be involved in that. I want to be involved in that. How can you be involved? You pray and you pay. Pray and you pay. You go and if you can't go, you support those who can't. That is the mission of God. This has been going on for 2,000 years. It is our turn. It's our turn to do something for Jesus. Amen? It's our turn. Last year, we had a great year. This year, God's got bigger and better things for New Life Christian Assembly. Let's stay on task. Let's stay on mission. Let's not drop the baton. Let's take what God has given, and let's go for it. Amen? Amen. Yes, let's praise the Lord. <clears throat> I want to pray with you, and then we're going to hand it back to Pastor Rick. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your mission. You have not changed, and your mission has not changed. You are here to seek and to save that which is lost. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. 
Help us, Lord, to love. Help us to have a burden for the lost. Help us to have a burden for your word, Lord, uh, for your world, oh God. We can't do it without your burden. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pastor Rick.